Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. This week, the war in Ukraine and the potentially devastating consequences for the U.S. and Indiana economies, from soaring energy prices to a fractured food supply chain. What role can Indiana play in stabilizing the long-term impact of the war? And are there opportunities for the state to join with the private sector in those solutions? My special guest this week is former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Agencies for Food and Agriculture, Kip Tom, who's joining us now from Tom Farms in Leesburg, Kosciuszko County. And uh, Kip, thank you for joining us. It's an honor to be with you, Jerry. You know, so, so or Gary, I, when I look at the, what's going on in the war in Ukraine right now, you know, we know it's disastrous for the people there. there nearly six million have migrated out of the country into Eastern Europe. We have another seven million that in, are internally displaced within uh, uh, Ukraine, and we have another 47 million that are on the edge of hunger across Africa because we are unable to get the wheat supplies to them. And that's where the private sector has been working hard to try to open up some channels to get uh, grain into meeting some of those uh, uh, hungry people across Africa. It's to the point where we're actually, or the World Food Program is deciding who gets to eat and who doesn't right now. Well, wow. as you look at it, uh, Kip, and I know you're very uh, involved and engaged in this on a daily basis, but as you look at the short-term and long-term implications uh, for the food supply chain uh, and the economy in particular here in Indiana, as you look at it and where it's headed, how significant, how, uh, how substantial could this be? Well, I think as we look around the corner, we know that uh, agriculture is very dependent upon fertilizer. It is a major building block to produce foods. And I think you can look back uh, at the world charts and, and see that uh, when nitrogen production began, that's when the human population started to expand. And uh, there is no question we need to bring some of these supply chains back to the United States and I'd certainly like to bring some back to Indiana. Okay, that's uh, the point I wanted to make because you firmly believe that Indiana can play a role uh, in, in connection with the, uh, the private sector perhaps, but can play a role in these solutions. H how so? Give, give us some examples. Yeah, I'll give you an example. An example would be that if we look at, for instance, nitrogen production, nearly a third of the world's nitrogen uh, that is exported comes out of Russia. Belarus is a producer of uh, potassium. Uh, those products uh, we could get out of Canada. We can get uh, nitrogen production start here in the United States and hopefully here in Indiana, whether on the north coast of, or excuse me, on the Michigan coast or yeah. down on uh, the Ohio River. But the reality is we have the potential to do it right here. Well, as you look at what's it going to take to make that happen, is it engaging state government, the private sector, all of the above? What's it going to take? I think we need to engage everybody. We need to leverage people for like from Corteva. We need to talk to, you know, like the Mitch Frazier's over at Agronovus and other companies around Indiana and try to go out and do a uh, travel around the world and talk to companies that would want to call Indiana home. I really believe this is an opportunity now for us to move forward, to bring these supply chains back and to create more jobs and uh, grow the economy of Indiana. As you look, and you, again, you're engaged on a daily basis. I know we're fortunate. I think you're back from Kansas City today and headed maybe back out to New York. So you've been traveling a lot uh, and dealing with this uh, issue. But as you look at the, kind of the long-term implications and where you see things going, so many uncertainties right now, where do you uh, see things going with the conflict and the impact? Well, let's face it, uh, Russia is never going to be a friend of the United States. China is not going to be a friend of the United States. Uh, we need to realize this is a long-term play, and that's why I'm saying we need to bring these these supply chains back to the United States. Uh, you know, there's so many of them, whether it's uh, chemicals coming out of China, we need to work with our regulatory uh, people in Washington, D.C., and make sure we have reasonable regulations that uh, will allow these facilities to come to the United States. You know, so oftentimes we think we're the most durable and reliable ag production food system in the world, but are we really? If we don't control the supply chains, we've globalized so much of it over the past 50 years. It's time to look at this and say, do we bring this home to the U.S. or to our friends and allies, people we can count on? That's a point we're at. And we need to move now. Certainly a lot of uncertainty uh, out there in the economy in general, but as you look at the ag economy, kind of the state of the ag economy uh, in particular here in Indiana, Kip, what's your take on the state of agriculture? Well, I'd say the ag economy in Indiana is pretty durable. It's pretty strong right now. I think we're going to see good revenues, good returns this year. You know, but uh, what happens if commodity prices turn around and uh, these input prices stay high? Mm -hmm. uh, we can cer certainly turn this around really quick, uh, whether it's the cost of machinery, land, or inputs. They're all high. We're growing the most valuable and the most expensive crop, so it's a lot of risk. 
And a lot of it from now on out throughout the rest of this year is up to Mother Nature. Yeah, very good. Ambassador Kip, Tom Kip, uh, really appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk with us. Uh, thank you for your leadership, too, in the ag community, not only here in Indiana, but certainly around the globe. And uh, please keep in touch. I'd like to come back and uh, talk to you again and see how things are going. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate the time. All right.